Hi and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn coming to you directly below the Beer Temple right now. Uh, expect to see this uh, a, a bit more going forward. It's just easier for my lazy ass to open the store and then come down here and do a show at my leisure. Uh, although the most comments I get without question about the show or the most compliments are I, I more of a comment is I love when people try to get in and, and you're and you're angry that people are trying to deliver beer not customers uh, delivery drivers are trying to deliver beer before the store opens and, and you're right there and kind of the realness of it and I get that but also the realness of it is like my stress level like freaking out and stuff like that so it's it's nice for me to be able to be down here in my little cave um, speaking of which if you ever come to the shop and I'm not around ask for me because there's a good chance that I'm hiding out in my little cave not hiding but you know doing the stuff that uh, was always my dream of doing when I opened up a beer shop which was you know um, <clears throat> paying taxes you know I just wanted to look for ways to pay more and different types of taxes and I figured um, a craft beer boutique shop was was a great way to do it uh, and it has been I mean I literally spend tons of time down here um, I just love also the glow of the fluorescent lights you know we have all LEDs up there you know to, to keep the beer from getting skunky upstairs but you know I just like that that glow and that kind of flicker down here so I'll probably just stick down here for a while anyway um, but uh, probably want to talk about beers so let's uh, let's get to that I've got three beers donated by Albert from Connecticut whom I have met uh, a couple times now a couple times at the store and on location at uh, Dark Lord Day this year. Super uh, generous guy um, from uh, from Connecticut and very much part of the, the beer scene kind of nationally it seems like just not a part of it but very in touch with it I guess I should say and uh, and and a part of it as a as a lover and a drinker of craft beer and he gave me um, three beers from Treehouse Brewing so thank you so much Albert and, and thanks to all at, who who donate beer um, always super super generous um, Treehouse for those of you who know or, or don't know rather is a, a really small brewery in rural western Massachusetts uh, I believe it's Monson uh, Massachusetts for those of you guys who want to see pictures of it um, good beer hunting did a write-up on it a while back been around for a couple years they really kind of came on to the scene with a big splash with a big citra I, a double IPA called Julius um, which was the first beer I ever had from them at, and I had it at the Shelton Brothers Festival uh, this past summer when we did a bunch of shows there and I would have loved to have gotten the Treehouse guy on maybe someday anyway uh, really nice double IPA I'm, I'm pretty citra heavy um, I'm almost certain and real like enthusiastic um, guy owner uh, pouring the beer um, really seemed kind of cool um, getting a bit stuffy hopefully that's not gonna be uh, too detrimental um, but you maybe get that, that nice kind of whistle you guys love to get um, anyway um, uh, Treehouse Brewing um, certainly seems to specialize a lot in in hoppy beers um, really kind of that uh, hill farm thing where it's out in just really like bucolic looking small town not quite as rural as uh, as hill farm is anything as rural as uh, hill farm but anyway um, three beers none of which I've ever had I figured I'd want to try them for the first time on camera so um, there we go. Uh, the first one is Eureka with Citra. Eureka is a, a blonde ale. Uh, comes in at 4%, 4.1% alcohol. A uh, bit cloudy here. Uh, kind of a cloudy, um, you know, deep yellow. Uh, almost looks like a Hefeweizen in color. Uh, also like a half, uh, kind of a nice billowy white head. Um, I was going to say, man, it smells like the Citra, and I'm guessing from the name Eureka with Citra. So Citra, what do I get in Citra? You guys have probably had Citra before, whether you know it or not. Super popular hop. Um, it is the zombie dust hop, you know. Uh, 
and I get a lot of peach in it. Uh, at times it can almost be like those gummy peachy rings. Um, sometimes it can be like peach nectar and sometimes it's almost like overripe, like just starting to turn peaches. Um, this one is somewhere in between those two. Probably a little bit closer to the, the, the gummy peachy ring thing. But just really vibrant, citrusy, tropical, you know, bordering on like passion fruit type thing, maybe a bit of mango. And that's a, I mean, that, that is what this beer's aroma is. You're not getting a lot other than those big, juicy citra hops. Hmm. It's very light, but it's got some mouthfeel to it. I wonder if they have oats in here. Um, it's uh, it's nice. Um, it's uh, got just enough body to not taste like hop water. Uh, just enough of a bite um, to kind of balance out. Uh, you, know, you know, just just give it something there. Um, even after it's just kind of sitting in my mouth, really not much hop bite at all. This is heavily on the uh, aroma flavor hop additions, the late hop additions rather than the bittering hop additions, and really delicious. I mean, if what you're looking for is a light, highly aromatic citra pale, I mean, this fits that very well. I can see a lot of people really liking this. I'm definitely getting more fruit and nectar now. Maybe some pineapple, banana, like smoothie type stuff, or or those like little cans of juice, those like nectar juices. Decent carbonation, not a ton, and bitterness that you know comes on pretty quickly on the back end and then fades out pretty fast, and you're left with this. Um, kind of like green tropics aroma. Really nice, great start to the, the three. Um, the next uh, the next guy is a, a pay, an APA, an American Pale Ale, called Lights On. All these beers are fresh within about a month or so. Um, Albert told me at the time and but they do not um, mark their at least their cans um, again uh, cloudy uh, a little bit more orange in this one big fluffy head as you can see you know really nice kind of fine carbonation just an attractive looking beer here um, from a, a standpoint of the the head you know some people do or don't like kind of cloudy beers. Um, I don't especially not like them, especially uh, certainly with these pails. But you know, brilliantly clear beer is very nice looking. I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. Getting some like juicy fruit bubble gum for sure. Juicy fruit bubble gum. Um, with a little bit more green, like fresh herb, a little like brighter dank note. Although dank like seems like this big like, resinous dank thing, but yeah, like juicy fruit and grass. Grass, take that for what it means to you. It means both in this case. I mean, certainly fuller bodied than this, than this rather, but not full bodied. Again, I wonder if there's any oats in here or something to kind of add some slickness, some mouthfeel, um, some proteins uh, in, into this beer. Um, maybe some wheat, I don't know. Could be this kind of the same thing. Although it doesn't have that kind of weedy flavor, but. You don't necessarily have to get that from a wheat beer. From a beer with wheat, I should say. And again, 
you know, massive amounts of aroma flavor, just a hint of bitterness. I mean, there may be more IBU in here, but there's also, I think maybe more, more sugar. Um, so I, the perceived, whether there is or, or isn't more bitterness in here, the perceived bitterness is less since um, sweetness and bitterness kind of balance themselves out. This could be 100 IBU, but it could also be a super sweet stout and it would still taste balanced. A great example of that is uh, Oscar Blues 1050. That's like a 99 IBU beer. You'd never guess it from the taste of it because there's so much malt sweetness there as well. Um, but I'm starting to get an idea, having had Julius and now these two, of what they're going for. They are going for less bitter, you know, less crisp maybe uh, pails in order in, in favor of these big, massive, um, highly fruity aroma flavor driven hops that just kind of go down um, easy. And there is some bitterness. There's certainly bitterness here, but it doesn't end with that like kind of crack at the end, that real crisp note. I need crack now twice. Curiosity 14. This one is uh, an American IPA, just under 7%, 6.8. Uh, uh, quite uh, a description on uh, this one. Uh, beer brew for the benefit of learned experience. Embraces the insides of this very can. La, 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 la. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Just trying to see if there is... Tetris, okay, whatever. Uh, okay, so we're, we're seeing the same thing again. We're seeing these cloudy beers that are yellow to golden yellow. Um, always such beautiful foam on, on these beers. That sticks around too. It doesn't just show up and then dissipate. So again, maybe there is some sort of head retaining uh, grain in here, you know, wheat and oats, both are really good for, for head retention. You know, Hefeweizens and stuff are known for their really beautiful billowy heads. And, um, you know, educated guess, I have no idea of knowing if that's the case or maybe only one of them and I'm, or maybe they just are really good at, at getting really nice, uh, foam on their beer. Um, but again, I'm starting to see a, a trend here. Um, similar, similar, um, you know, there are differences between all of them. Uh, this one, I'm, I'm getting a little bit more green, but I'm getting a lot of that kind of tropic nectar as well. Um, you know, it, it, you guys probably know that those style of hops that I'm talking about, those, those kind of dripping nectar tropical beers that have like that hint of, of green in it, like Galaxy is a great example, um, Citra too. Um, if you like those hops, and many, 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 many people do, um, you know, Treehouse I think would be worthwhile um, to, to seek out if you have the opportunity to get it. Hard to get to. I think their distribution is very extremely limited. Um, but you know, if you have the means, you know, in the uh, to paraphrase Ferris Bueller. This sort of reminds me of like Hetty Topper. Um, it's funny. Having had this, you know, uh, what's this guy? Uh, uh, 5.6 and a 4.1. You get up to 6.8, and I actually can taste some alcohol in it now. I can, uh, uh, so it's like boozy, a 6.8 boozy beer. Uh, I, you can also get some bitterness here. This is starting to become a true IPA at this point. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me a lot of Hetty Topper. Um, they all have that kind of underlying peachy flavor and it, it could be a, a result of the yeast that they're using as well. Um, maybe it's, it's have something to do with the clarity as well. Maybe their yeast is, isn't very flocculent, meaning it does not kind of clump together and drop out. Um, you know, a lot of times that is, most of the time, that is what is contributing 
greatly to the clarity of a beer is, is the yeast and the suspension there. It can be other things, just hop haze and protein haze and all sorts of stuff. Um, chill haze, which is not what's going on here. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe it's a house yeast thing too that's giving that real kind of peachy note. Um, I mean, these are all like kissing cousins here. They're all very similar, they're all very good. I couldn't imagine you. I could imagine you certainly having favorites uh, of these three, and I can imagine people liking one over the other and not everyone just saying, oh no, this is certainly the best one. But I couldn't imagine anyone really saying, I like this one, I hate these two. Uh, they're very similar, uh, very similar uh, flavor profile, very much kind of, and, and Julius as well, and very much kind of of the moment, the current trend that uh, the beer geeks are kind of going crazy over in terms of flavor profile is typified in these beers right here. Really nice stuff. Delicious. I mean, we're going to send these upstairs to taste them out with whoever comes in today, uh, any customers, and I'm sure people are going to go nuts for these beers. Um, they're, they're, they're well made, they're fresh, they're incredibly hoppy aromatically. Um, you know, the, the malt is, you know, negligible. It's just there to be there. Um, maybe there's some added um, adjunct grains like oats I keep referring to to kind of bolster some of that body without giving any malt sweetness to it. Um, and uh, they're really good. I mean, these are exceptionally good at what they're going for. A lot of breweries try to make these beers. You know, um, if it was just as easy as making a heady topper, everyone would do it. Uh, these guys are, are doing a very good job. So um, kudos to uh, the guys at Treehouse. Um, really, really fun stuff. Thank you again to Albert for bringing these by. Uh, it's been fun to kind of get to know this brewery a little bit more now, having had four of their beers and seeing a similar trend amongst all of them. It's, it is really kind of fun to see that because sometimes you'll get three beers and they're all completely different in profile. And you can see, oh, okay, maybe this brewery is very into nailing style, you know, or maybe it's like, no, this is what this brewery goes for. Uh, so it's kind of fun. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, had a really fun time doing this show. I want to get back to doing this show more and more. I say it all the time, and I always mean it. Um, so thanks for bearing with me. Um, and thank you for some of the recent reviews on iTunes. It's great. Uh, it really helps uh, the show. If you want to kind of help the show, you don't need to send in beer. It's always appreciated. But, um, you know, giving us a five-star review and a rating helps a lot, too. It, it kind of you know, um, gets the word out there. So thank you uh, to everyone who's done that. And, um, you know, if you ever have any questions, let me know. You can email me. And uh, also, uh, just leave a comment at craftbeertemple.com for any of the, uh, the episodes, you know. Um, that's about it, guys. You know, until next time, I've got some great Treehouse beer to drink, and hopefully you do too. Cheers. <laughs>